everyone, to episode 98 of Aprilware Podcast with Chill Boys. I'm your host, Michael Respias, and with me as always is your doctor recommended dose of nerdiness, Carlos Rodriguez, aka your nerd today. And with us today, we have a very special guest. He is the host of Video Game Trivia, the Left Behind Club podcast, the Cutscenes podcast. This is a lot to read for my first time back. He is the creative mind behind the gaming brief, but most importantly, for the purposes of today's show, recent Forbidden Door attendee, Jacob McCourt. Jacob, screw Carlos today. How you doing? Oh, wow. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that Carlos slander, but like, happy to be here. Whenever yeah. there's, a, whenever there's an extra. time to chant, you fucked up, <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> I have no air in here. All right. Ugh. All right. So, um, in case you couldn't read this before you came on, clicked on here, start at the watch, start at the read, uh, we are talking about the Forbidden Door. In case that intro did not lead into that, we're talking about Forbidden Door. Um, yeah. So, Carlos, give me some time to breathe here. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. I didn't know if you wanted to, but you know what, we probably should have talked about it if we're going to start or end with it, so there you go. All right. So, Jacob, yes. as a wrestling fan, yes. we have a few icebreaker questions for anybody listening or watching out there. What is or who is your favorite wrestler? Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to sound like such a mark when I say this, but I think that my favorite wrestler is probably Kenny Omega. Um, it oscillates. I mean, especially after this match. I, I have I have many thoughts. Um, but, yeah, I, I think Kenny would have to be my guy. <laughs> okay. Favorite match of all time. Um, <laughs> not to spoil what we're about to talk about uh, at Forbidden Door, but it's really wild to sit in an arena and watch a wrestling match that you know will probably be the best match that you ever see in your entire life, especially live. Um, I think before it was Okada Omega 2, um, but I think it's now Osprey Omega uh, 2 as well. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, so finally, favorite promo of all time. Oh, man. Um, so I'm a relatively new wrestling fan. Um, it's actually Cody Rhodes that got me into wrestling, but not for the reason that you think. Uh, do you remember uh, a little set of matches that he had with uh, Stephen Amell uh, on WWE television and pay-per-view? Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. You mean Stardust <laughs> versus Neville? Yep. At uh -huh. the time, and uh, Stephen Amell. Yep, and ba uh, Bad News Barrett was in there too, I think. So that was the storyline that got me into professional wrestling. So I am not like a, an Attitude Era fan. Of course, I've <laughs> absorbed the best stuff from that, <laughs> but I'm a relatively new wrestling fan. So I hate to go off and say like and everything from the last year, um, but I think MJF's promo that he cut, like coming back from a few months off, is probably at least in recent memory the best promo I've seen. So yeah, yeah, that's the one where we were talking about where he came back as the devil. He had the devil mask and yes. he had the chip and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. we talked about that and not about the aftermath of all out. Although I I do think my favorite like it's not necessarily a promo, but like skit, I guess. I was in the arena for when Shane McMahon came back. Uh, like it happened in Detroit and I was there at Joe Louis Arena. Mm -hmm. And the thing that happened on the the live show is that Vince McMahon uh, essentially like got right up into, I think Shane's face and called him a little fucker. And it made <laughs> television and like, <laughs> and they obviously had to change it afterwards. But like, that's probably my favorite moment because Vince dropped an F-bomb and it was great. Because <laughs> everyone in the arena's like, oh, he dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've been on a big promo kick, so that's a newer question for our uh, our guest. I've been watching like a bunch of promos. I just want to give a special shout out to probably one of the most underrated ones, CM Punk promo before going against The Rock. Okay. So yeah, like a few years ago, he basically like said, basically, if you come against me, you're coming against God, and it's such an underrated promo that does not get enough love. No. But that's besides the point. Got introductions out of the way, so rest pass. Let's talk about Zero Hour. 
Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Don't even pass this along to me. I can tell you what I did not watch, and I did not watch Zero Hour. So, <laughs> so I was going to ask, are we going to skip it? So you can you can discuss it. Maybe oh, I can okay. learn something so, about Jacob, what happened prior to Zero Hour. Before <laughs> yep. filming, you said there was a dark match. Yeah. So Tom Lawler uh, was supposed to wrestle Adam Cole on the pay per view, but unfortunately Adam Cole was sick and un- unable to wrestle. Uh, unable to wrestle so they gave tom lawler a match against serpenico with luther uh it was i don't want to call it a squash match but it was about as close to a squash match that isn't a squash match because it was four minutes and 10 seconds and kind of made tom lawler look like a star it was on dark it wasn't even on zero hour like people were coming into the arena i kind of felt bad because i'm like i think tom lawler deserves something better than this um but i mean he had some run in with you know cole or whatever he did not yeah. And then, you know, they have some kind of alliance. Yeah. Right. But uh, with MJF. So in my head, yeah, I was like, he's going to. I could barely recognize Luther right now because he's not, he doesn't look like the Luther that I remember. Um, but it was sort of a squ- like Serpenico didn't get any offense. in, so it's not really something that I, I want to focus on. But uh, the first pre-show match was Mogul Embassy versus uh, Chaos with El Desperado. That was mm-hmm. that was pretty decent. Mm-hmm. It was a good way to start. I thought that was very, um, I thought that was very, um, Mm -hmm. I do like this new mogul embassy. Yeah, I think um, Swerve being with with Cage or anything. And obviously it's more ROH because that's, I mean, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good foil and stuff. And I don't know. I didn't, I I felt like when Swerve created mogul enterprises, was it at the time, like a couple months ago? Yep. I wasn't really feeling it. I don't know, like with that uh, Parker Brodo, like nothing mm-hmm. was really clicking. Rick I, Ross I, I, was hilarious. Yeah. He was. That was a. I was a big highlight, and I, I didn't realize how much of a wrestling fan he was. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that was decent. That was decent. Uh, I think I'm yeah. one of the only people in the world I feel sometimes that thinks Brian Cage is boring. No, I feel like Respass is much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nah. I love his move set, and yeah. I, I feel like there's. He needs. He needs like a Prince Nana. He needs somebody with him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I we, we I think we saw not the burial, but like the last like shining light of Brian Cage in Philly when when he rushed past quit and it was that uh what was it? It was Rampage, it was Starks versus Cage in a Philly street fight. Yeah. And like, it was just like and you're like, all right, well Cage has been getting his shit kicked in for like two or three months at this point by like the rest of Team Taz. He has to win this. And he lost and we're like all right. I mean, thank God we're starting. Can we hold yeah. on one second? I yeah. feel like such an asshole right now. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. All right. I kicked the power again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mogul Embassy <laughs> yeah, defeated Chaos. That was, you know, it was a decent <laughs> match. But I, w- I want to actually talk about the next match, which I really, really enjoyed, which was Athena against the newly graduated Valedictorian of her class, Billy Starks. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. What a match! That was really good. That was, I mean, I I've seen some of Billy's stuff on online. Thank God, um, it, some of her indie stuff. But man, what a, what a great like opening! That was a, that's the perfect zero hour match mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to have on, especially it's for the Owen Hart Foundation tournament as well. Mm-hmm. To uh, Athena won, but man, Billy looked amazing, mm-hmm. amazing. So hey, how about the, in one week? I think we got her officially signed, right? And then. Uh, Nick, Nick Wayne. Wayne signed yet? Yeah, I think he's signed because he just turned literally turned eighteen, like wild <laughs> two days ago, man. <laughs> the future of AEW, man, this like fourth tier of pillar mm-hmm. is gonna be awesome, man. Yeah, it it almost seemed like you know they're book, gonna book her similarly to the way they booked Sky Blue, where like Sky Blue didn't really win a match for months and mm-hmm. didn't need to, and Billy Starks doesn't need to win a match for months either. Mm-hmm. Can get her feet wet and then maybe start winning three to four months from now. Athena made her look great too. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was heavy hitting too because I know Athena has been there's been controversy you know on her her in ring style how hard she she's been hitting now that she's back mm-hmm. you know and not in the WWE system and stuff but I don't know man I think I think Billy was a great opponent for her I think it, like you said made her look like a million bucks how was the crowd well uh, it seems s- everyone knew about Billy which is nice yeah I, what I was really impressed about was the Toronto crowd I would say from zero hour to probably the second to last match they were full bore it didn't matter what match it was they were cheering or booing 
uh, mm. and it applied to the pre-show, which which I was really happy about. Which is a nice change of pace from Double or Nothing. Is that Las yep. Vegas crowd horrible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, horrible. <laughs> That's why I think that was what we were talking. about. We were talking about like the summer of. Now I'm trying to now remember our last episode. We were talking about the summer of AEW because there's so much content yeah. that AEW has packed this summer, and it was right before Double or Nothing, and we were like, they have five pay-per-views that Tony Khan will be running. Right, Double or Nothing, Forbidden Door. Uh, ROH has one now in Newark. Yeah, uh, Death Before um, Dishonor. A Death Before Dishonor, yeah. And, uh, and all when, in and all out. When we record it, ROH didn't have their pay per view announced. I said to you no. that they should have, they're going to have yeah. one. Yeah, you announced And it's in Newark. Yeah. Which is not far from those. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to drive up there. Uh, especially on the Friday, I got to take work off. Uh, it's Newark. Ugh, it's Jersey. Uh, <laughs> But no, we were talking about, it. and then now, especially with the game being released, man, like they, there's a lot that they have to hit. I, 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 I was hoping, at least I think I was hopeful at the end of the episode that most of the chips fall in place for AEW this summer. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I've seen a lot of positive things on the internet for Fight Forever, which is makes me happy enough. I, I was hoping for a better Metacritic score. Not that we're getting into it. Like, you also did <laughs> fucking two K to provide me a code. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. I didn't text everyone in my group. Uh, it's THQ Nordic. Is that? Did you yeah. just email it, 2K? Is that, it, that, that, that was no, your problem. Yeah, that's why. That I was your 2K, problem. Because yeah, I was thinking, like, well, 2K. <laughs> okay, where's my WWE? WWE? <laughs> WWE? <laughs> WWE? <laughs> Here's WWE. Yeah. No, they gave me a code for WWE. Uh, that's why I was like, yeah, THQ Nordic did not give me one for it. Um, I'm not bitter. Again. <laughs> not at all. Uh, no, but I. I'm happy with what I'm seeing Metacritic wise, and it's it's nice. Like we are we're friends with Mario Rivera, and mm-hmm. he had a really positive review, and that's kind of all I need. That's really all. I need. And a lot of people who played Nerm Mercy be like, "Hey, this is what I want in a game." That's enough. For have, me. have you oh. not played it yet, Carlos? No, no. I, mean, oh, I actually just played it for like an hour before we got on. What'd you think? Um, I like it. Quick thoughts. I like it. I mean, no. I I did a road. Um, was it Road to the Elite? Whatever the hell. It's called, yeah. yeah. Um, with Eddie Kingston, um, so I like trained with him a little bit. I did the Casino Battle Royale, and um, yeah, I mean, I like it. I mean, it is what it is. It, it's going to be what it's going to be, and I'm just, yeah. I'm excited for everything that they are hopefully going to add on, which is what it looks like. You know, it's going to be one yeah, of those things that's going to get upgraded. I, have, I don't know. What, reading, watching the reports and stuff, I'm, I'm hopeful for Fight Forever Two. If that makes sense, you know, like I think that's that's gonna hit. But I'm, I feel pretty positive of where that's landing. Now we know Forbidden Door spoiler for this whole episode, fucking amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> double or nothing, not that great. Forbidden <laughs> Door, great. <laughs> so now we have three unknowns still for this summer of AEW, which you know we'll see where that goes. But it, it is interesting that uh, uh, it, that crowd really helps. That's uh, kind of yeah. where I was going. To. <laughs> that crowd really helps, man. But yeah, yeah. continue on. We had. Uh, uh, El Phantasmo versus uh, Stu Grayson of The Righteous, which is a uh, new ROH development. Who knows that? Dutch. <laughs> and uh, Vincent have taken Stu Grayson from the Dark Lord. Mm-hmm. That was really good. That was a really good match as well. Yep. You know what's funny? I I didn't even put this together. That, that I was like, man, Stu Grayson on the Zero. Like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Like ROH and stuff. I was like, oh, wait, Canadians. Two Canadians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stupid. <laughs> My dumb ass is like, I wonder why he's wrestling on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, makes sense. yeah, I think ELP looked looked great. I know there was a oh theme God. issue. They played his like old theme and then his new theme, like one at the oh. beginning and one at the end. <laughs> I saw um, that, yeah. But otherwise, again, <laughs> I, I think Steve Grayson's underrated. He's a great worker. Mm-hmm. Um, ELP looked great too. Uh, I'm glad he went over. Um, great match. There were very yeah. few matches on this card. I think there's one match that I didn't enjoy that I thought was sloppy, and it wasn't on the pre-show. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll, so yeah. yeah, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I was also I was shocked too because watching it from at home, I think Kevin Kelly did a really good job on commentary, um, catching people up. If people who don't know who El Phantasma is, they just know AEW, maybe ROH stuff, like who he is. That he just had a falling out with Bullet Club proper. Like he's not part of David Finley's Bullet Club. He's kind of on his own now. They they did a really good job of of explaining if you are not if you're new to new japan who these people are where they're at if you haven't seen them in a year like why is he not with bullet club well this is why quick mm-hmm. run 
I thought that was really good. And then finally, we had uh, Los Ingobleables de Japón versus... <laughs> I was going to make rest that <laughs> Versus uh, <laughs> United Empire. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, that this, I, it's just good. I, <laughs> I enjoyed that match. I enjoyed that match very much. But it's like six amazing workers. So, of course... Yeah. You know, like, I, of course, they're going to have a great match. I'm not even surprised. That's like that. That was zero hour base. That's basically Forbidden Door. And like, a, like, a meh. Wait, it's like everyone's going to have a great match, of course. Yep. But I, th- no, I was surprised I, by the amount of people around me that popped for TJP. Because, again, I, I was with folks who, like, didn't know New Japan as well as uh, as I would. So they're mm-hmm. like, oh, wait, that's TJP. <laughs> is he is he in United Empire? What? It was more than one person. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It, that's really interesting. I guess, what, what was their touchdowns? I wonder if they were, like, just big cruiserweight I, division fans in WWE. Uh, well, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's the first cruiserweight champion, so I think True. that that yeah. carries some weight. Uh, that does, and yeah. He, that's, that was, like, probably five years ago at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah, for it to, to hold that still all this time. I mean, he had a decent run in impact, too. If, yeah. yeah. And he's got lots of tattoos now, so... Oh really? Yeah, I haven't seen him yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, that threw me off. Yeah, I was looking at him. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. feel like you did have any. Mm-hmm. All right. No. So <laughs> let's get into the, uh, the into, into what I seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You saw in a in a drunken haze. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we start we start off the actual forbidden door. Not not all that that BS. Um, <laughs> with the AEW World Championship and. Thankfully, this was explained, although MJF has done a beautiful job of explaining why he's not in the main event of these pay-per-views, basically saying he didn't want to be around all these indie um, New Japan guys. <laughs> he wanted to get the hell out. So uh, we have... <laughs> that is a tweet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know about this, Jacob, during the match. Just so commentary <laughs> yeah. goes. And it's like, I think there's like the last five minutes of the match left, right? Mm-hmm. It's like six, seven minutes yep. of the match left. And <laughs> what is it? As it all goes like, did you guys look at Twitter? <laughs> and they're like, wait, why? Like MJF just had a scheduled t- uh, Excalibur goes. MJF just had a scheduled tweet going. I was yep. like, well, I'm glad I'm done with that match. I'm on my way home. <laughs> and it's still <laughs> wrestling. So I think someone looked at it like, you're still in a match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so great. Yeah. So good. And he had a great jacket too. And he, it, you know, oh, he comes out and he's got the it. the New Japan as an indie fed jacket, yeah. which was just like. Chef's oh, kiss. Good, <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. For, for those of you that don't know, it was MJF versus Hiroshi Tanahashi, since I never yes. actually got to that part. Um, yeah. But MJF won. Um, I don't think any of us really thought it was going to happen any differently. Uh, One day, it, this has to happen. See, One day, like, and, someone's got to win the and AEW World I'm, Championship. I'm going to fully admit this, and I've done this plenty of times on this show. Um, I am not as much of a new japan person uh i never was i really got into it because of kenny omega and okada and literally when we started this we did an episode um on the fourth match i think like leading up to it we all watched a three so i kind of got into it there i watched stuff here and there but i don't really i don't get the hype behind tanahashi because i only know older (laughs) like hard moving like it it I what I seen in Tanahashi these two nights is what I think of Tanahashi <laughs> when I think of him. I, I've seen him live at the the ECW arena and everyone went hype over him and I watched him and it was just a lot of guys carrying him. Um, I think they did the right thing with MJF because MJF can carry anybody. He looked a lot better with MJF because MJF carried that, but man, is it it? I don't well, know. It was hard MJF, to watch for me. <laughs> I, I, for me, I was thinking like, it's, it's a good litmus test, right, for MJF. Like mm-hmm. he's getting put, and this builds his resume as a performer. When even character-wise, he could be like, I have defeated everybody. Your Danielsons, your Omegas. Like eventually, he's gonna go down that line. He's like, I've beaten your favorite wrestlers. I've beaten the <laughs> aces of every company. You know, yeah. when he eventually goes to WWE and wrestles John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Down the line, who knows? Hiroshi Tanahashi looked older, so he's. I've been following New Japan for maybe about five years, and when I started watching, it was like, uh, like Jericho Omega era. That's kind of the thing. Like I'd kind of followed it really loosely, right. and then that's what got me in. Where I'm, oh, I'm watching every Wrestle Kingdom. I'm catching highlights of the G1 when somebody says, "Oh, watch this match." Um, but Tanahashi's 46. 
now. And he was moving a little slower than I expected. And I don't want to say I was disappointed because I these are human beings. Um, but he he didn't look great. No, he didn't it look wasn't great. a great showing. Yeah, no, it was, it was. I was shocked by it. Yeah, and while I I liked the match, mm-hmm. I was like kind of glad it was the opener mm-hmm. because I felt every match after like it was like it was like a like a slow build and then a meteoric rise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so, nah. and peak, and then I was exhausted by the end of the night. But we'll get to <laughs> <that again>. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I thought it was okay. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was all right, man. It was not Tanahashi's best match. I mean, mm-hmm. listen, if you somehow have you know New Japan World or you know the internet, just YouTube. Um, look He's up, got a like, bunch of runs with the heavyweight championship. You can yeah. watch. You can Him go back Okada, 2011 times, yeah. mm-hmm. when he was the champion. There's there's a ton of stuff to watch. <laughs> they're, they're great matches. I guess that's what sucks for me too because I've been in and out of it when Jay White was kind of starting out in New Japan. You know, you have Zack Saber Jr. Um, you know, even uh, when Jeff Cobb was first over there, and I'm I'm watching all these matches. Lance Archer. I remember we did a G1 like contest when we first started April work like years ago and i remember watching one match uh, there was two different matches where i was like lance archer i don't know what the fuck happened to him but man is he a star over there like i was just watching him like wow like i yeah. i remember <laughs> who he was and what he is now he's a star over there and i wish he would have stayed over there because he was a star there um and sonata was somebody who always when it was evil and sonata at the time but he was wrestling in the g1 and i remember thinking eventually they're going to break them up and I never thought he'd be champion. Like, I'm not going to act like I had that kind of... But I was just like, wow, well, like, he's really talented. And I'm just watching all of them. And then, like I said, then you see Tanahashi, who there, a lot of it's like, well, he used to be a high flyer. <laughs> he's had yeah. to learn how to... Like I said, and it, and then even um, with, like, Shinsuke, when he first went um, to NXT, like, I didn't know him from New Japan, so when I seen him, I was like, oh, wow, he's impressive, so when I mm-hmm. see Tanahashi, it just, it, it, it doesn't add up completely, and I've never went back and watched, and that's, that's probably my fault by not doing that, but, uh, yeah, so. We should do that, episode 101, <laughs> it'll be, like, the best of Tanahashi, and we'll <laughs> run down, like, three matches, or something. Like that. that'd be fun. <laughs> um, so, speaking of, uh, big name new japan wrestlers that i go uh about um cm punk wrestled satoshi kojima 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 and what a Lariat. great callback Man. i popped i popped so big for that i was so dummy happy for that random like callback to a random rf video <laughs> like shoot interview thing with Samoa Joe and Punk when they lived in Philly back in the day. I would I popped so big for that. I cannot believe that call. He's just such a student of the game. Yeah, it's hard not to be like, God damn it. <laughs> Can I bitchy. tell you though? I mean, this is when the crowd came alive. Right. The crowd yeah, booed the shit out of CM Punk. I I that was great. I was so I I popped so big as well for that man because he he took it in stride and i i'm loving this like oh we're i'm not we're not in chicago anymore yeah. like this thing like let's not hide the fact of this stuff man yeah we all right we we get it there's gonna <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of people late you, nah, the, you know he's always been that he's he's smart yeah, he ain't stupid he's he, no. he realizes where his money's coming from and he he ain't got no problem with it and he'll play right along with it honestly as much as storyline based MJF made sense to be the first, I felt like if they flipped these, you probably get a better reaction to the MJF Tanahashi match because now the crowd is hot from Punk, and now the little things MJF's doing is getting over on the crowd a little bit more. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, they would have flipped them, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was it was what it was. These first two matches were what they were going to be. They you know they were fun matches, and you kind of. He got into the real card, I guess, after these two matches was like where. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was what it was. CM Punk was going to win. We didn't get Punk and Kenta. I'm still butt hurt. So. Uh. (laughs) Card order is is one of the things that I like. I can never appreciate how difficult it is for Tony Khan to book book a show. But there were some matches on the card where I'm like, 
I don't understand why you put that there. Um, we'll get to stuff later, but even earlier in the card, I'm just like, why didn't you open with the four way? The, the, the one that was oh, next or even the pump yeah. match. Yeah. Yeah. Either or. Yeah. Now, yeah. yeah. You're right. Cause like in hindsight, when you see it and even, even just get them in the booth, mm-hmm. that vehemently, that, that heat feeling that heat, yep. everyone woke up, everyone. Mm-hmm. And, right. and, and my, we mentioned zero hours. It was good. It was decent, mm-hmm. but like, this is the pay-per-view proper, like to kick off like that. And also kind of makes sense too. It's an Owen Hart foundation tournament match, which seems like, and I, I don't want to disrespect Athena or Billy in this, but like they, they seem like, all right, we are finally back. Punk's back on a pay per view. Let's get him on a pay per view match, right? Mm-hmm. Like we just got to get. Him. So we'll do the tournament. Well, he's in the tournament. We'll yeah. throw the tournament match in Forbidden Door. Uh, <laughs> New Japan. Who do you got? Kojima. Yeah. Cool. This is even perfect. He'll make. Who a would actually? It. Who would wrestle this man? Uh, <laughs> Kojima. You don't know who he yeah. is. Okay, wrestle. You like bread? I heard you like bread. Why yeah, don't you wrestle Phil? Don't hit him in the dick. <laughs> yeah. uh, damn it, Kojima. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried not to. But yeah, and then and then to kind of make it not so known in my head i was like booking it like they probably then book athena like a woman's qualifier match so like that it did look obvious like well why are we having like a random owen hart they're usually yep. during dynamites or rampages or right. now collision they could be on now it makes sense but th- man the next match yeah banger now yeah and and i will i see i will be the oddball here and say this was my match of the night only, Ooh. only, only because it's believe, hey, it's listen. too it's too easy to call the other one it. This yep. this That's match, this <laughs> match stood out in the best kind of way possible. And if Orange Cassidy never defends the international title in a singles match again, it will make this run even more perfect. Because uh, it, this had everything you want out of a match. This match had uh, it. It didn't take it. It wasn't. It could have very easily become one big joke. And it and it w- between <laughs> I I'll, I'll run down the names since I didn't actually say what it was Orange Cassidy versus Zack Saber Jr. versus not even gonna try to say his first name Shibata and versus Daniel Garcia for the AEW International Championship. Uh, Yori. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I I was gonna butcher it, so I figured let me just <laughs> not. Uh, so that match, um, like I said, in my mind, kicked this pay per view off. Uh, the first two matches were what they were. This this kicked it off in the best possible way like i said it, it's so weird how orange cassidy went from where he was to where he is now that he could still have that funny you know they they had funny spots and zach saber jr is perfect in that 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 role because mm-hmm. he's so over the top and he's so technically sound that it 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 just and garcia with his dancing and and, and <laughs> yeah i I called it what I called it, and and that's yeah. I it was, it was an awesome match, an awesome way to end it, and hopefully, I'm assuming they're going to possibly lead to some type of one on one or triple threat, most likely in in a all out, all in. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't remember all which in ones win. Would win. be great and have like a triple title match, basically. Like winner gets. Every yeah, title. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome, mm-hmm. Jacob. How was it? How what are your thoughts on this match? Yeah, um, I thought it was I, like a sleeper hit. For me. It was a sleeper hit, and I'm not the biggest Daniel Garcia fan. Like I, I'm just like meh towards him, right? Because um, I don't really, I didn't really know his gimmick was like I, I knew it's like sports entertainer, um, and the crowd at one point was chanting "You're a wrestler, you're yeah. a wrestler," yeah. um, but uh, but no, it was fun, and it had that good mix of like Shibata, who is like smashing the heck out of people. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. who's doing these great holds and his pin where he like goes backwards onto his head and oh pins God, someone with yeah. his legs like right. so <laughs> impressive to see live and then even having Orange Cassidy do his like his little kicks to kick <laughs> off the match yeah. like this match had everything and I was shocked it was only 11 minutes yeah, it, was it was longer yeah it really did feel like it was longer but wow. not in a bad way yeah, yeah. now I would have I, I would have if you would have asked me right now I had no idea I would have said at least 20 Mm-hmm. 11. Wow. That, yeah, it felt longer, and it felt great. They had really good storytelling, too, as well. Like, mm-hmm. I loved at one point, I think I tweeted out that um, there was uh, a, an exchange between Shibata and Saber where they just kept, like, wanting to beat the shit out of each other. And mm-hmm. they, again, commentary did a great job. Kevin Kelly and all explaining that, like, 
like they hate each other. They've hated each other for a long time and all this stuff. And and you know they're explaining that really well. And as they're talking about that, Garcia is just coming in and <laughs> they're basically pushing him off. Each of yep. them are hitting him to beat the shit out of him, get him out of here. And it really told the story of like <laughs> like an evolution of Garcia because he is a wrestler. He's one of the mm-hmm. like. It made sense to him for him to be a pure champion in ROH. Like he's that good, and he should be in this match. But now he's this sports entertainer, and they just like don't have time for him. Like get, get the fuck away! Yeah. Rather wrestle Orange Cassidy than you. <laughs> like, I mean, even Orange Cassidy stealing the pin, I believe, on Zack Saber Jr. from I think it was Shibata. Again, sets yeah. us up for this. Yeah. You know, at the end of the match, we got all three titles: the New Japan TV title, or yes. the new was it the New uh, Japan New World, the World, World TV, TV yeah. title. Yeah. And then uh, Shibata is the pure champion pure in champion. ROH, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that triple title match at All In is going to be fab. I, w- I would love that to be the case. And I would somehow, I would really want it. Because we know Sabre can do it and Shibata can do it, obviously. Mm-hmm. But like I would love to see Orange Cassidy in a pure rules match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Because, he, the, I mean, think about it. The Orange Crush is his finisher. That's his one close. You can only get one hit. So that that tells the story right there, right? You only get one close fist hit throughout the whole match. That's it right there. Mm. That just that will sell the whole story. That would be yep. that match. Yeah. And Damn. Saber goes over in England, like you want Wembley oh, to pop? Yeah. Oh my god. You have to. Yeah, he has to. Yeah. Yeah. That that is great, yeah. Um All right. All right. So um I'm sure we'll get through this very quickly because what happened after this match was way more important than what happened during this match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sonata, the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, uh, defeated Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Um, it was what it was. <laughs> I mean, I, as much as everyone, uh, you know, it, it, Sonata said what he said about Jack Perry, and I, I'm sure there's a lot of truth there. It, it, it sucks because Sonata, as the champion, is not the draw from New Japan. Uh, so it was easy to put somebody like Jungle Boy and try to show. Th- I, I don't know. The match seemed like a lot of uh, <sighs> Sonata not care. <laughs> I, not that he didn't care, but like it came off yeah. like he was like, "I'm too good for this," and I think the match kind of showed it. But I, Jungle Boy, I don't know. I don't know. I, it was all lead up to to him turning on Hook at the end of it. I, that's that's all this match really was, and I it sucks because I love I actually really enjoy Zanata, Um but this match was, eh. I think the problem maybe is that you don't believe Jack Perry is a credible heavyweight champion. Yeah, or a credible either. threat to the heavyweight title, because right. he just he's a smaller fella. Um, yeah. he's a decent talker. We saw his promo on. Uh, on Dynamite last night, which was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't know if he's like a credible threat to anyone that you know weighs over 220 pounds. No, nah. no. Nah. And, and, and if you were to give that spot to like a Christian or something like that, then at least it was like, all right, you know, like you said, it, it, it was like me saying that Tanahashi wasn't going to beat MJF. We, we knew Tanahashi wasn't going to beat him. And I think that's the problem is both of their world titles were defended in matches that you were like, all right, they put somebody yeah. in here you Eventually, know is not going to win. We, I talked about it with some friends afterwards, like I think on Monday, and um, one of these forbidden doors, like someone's going to have to pull the trigger. Either like an AEW star has to be, you know, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion by the end of the night, mm-hmm. or vice versa, New Japan star has to be AEW World Champion. Like it's going to happen eventually. But th- yeah, this night was not the night for either of them. Um, Jack, I think. It's it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes from here. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I like I agree. I think this past Wednesday was a good beginning start to his heel turn. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that he wore his dad's jacket <laughs> from nine oh two. I don't know why. Um, I dug that. I but yeah, it was weird to see this match, and it was weird. Like I, I it, it was so funny because I didn't think of like a turn, and then they were playing it up like on commentary a lot too. And, like it was like oh look at this, like oh hook guy looks pissed and stuff. I'm like. Is Hook going to turn on him? Like, I thought Hook was going to turn, so I yeah, was surprised. Yeah, I did too. That's, yeah. That was the shock, and I was like, oh, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm kind of excited about this now. Mm-hmm. The match was was okay enough. Like, it, it wasn't, again, I don't think there was a bad match on the card. I just think there was some that were absolutely god tier. <laughs> and then there were some that were like, holy shit, this is amazing. And then there were some like, really good match. Yeah. Yep. Like, okay, enough. I like, mean, this is okay enough for a pay per view. 
Yeah, I, I, up to this point, this was the worst match in, in my mind. Was the worst. It, it just I don't know, and, and it sucks because now Jungle Boy, whatever he's gonna call himself now. I hope it's still not Jungle Boy. Um, I hope it's Hollywood. Jack Perry. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've seen so I've seen good. that a lot. Um, oh. Yeah. He yeah. needs to come out to the 9021 theme. Like, that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But the problem is this is going to be used most likely to get Hook over more than it's going to be to get Jungle Boy over. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was what it was. It's also hard to think, too, that, that, that he's so young that, like, he has so much room to play. He has so many years to be, like, we're still in the figuring out stage of it, Jack Perry, it's, it's, which is crazy. It's so unfair it, it the whole pillar thing it's unfair it was unfair to jungle boy it's unfair to darby allen it's unfair to sammy guevara that mjf was ready from day one and that was the problem they put them all on the same tier and they were not mjf was ready from day one and they held him back while trying to push these three and and darby allen as fun as he is um sammy guevara probably is what he is and, and jungle boy is like that guy that you're like well maybe if he gets a little bit bigger <laughs> if he gets a little bit like you're almost like waiting for him to grow yeah right, you're, yeah <laughs> you're almost waiting for jungle boy to grow a little bit like yep. can you grow a couple inches put some weight on like because <laughs> you at least have that look like you could be yeah, the guy yeah 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 and i think darby's put on some size um yeah but, it does seem like way yeah. yeah like maybe he's like imagine they were like a buck 60 two years ago like Incredibly, I think Darby's maybe 20 pounds heavier than he used to be. Um, but it's unfair because MJF w- always kind of was a heavyweight. And the yeah. other three guys would, like, they would have crushed on Nitro back in the day. Like, oh being, my God. being cruiserweights. <laughs> yeah. But they're Hell just, yeah. they're mid-carters. As much as I yeah. want to, like, I don't want to be a dick and be like, uh, <laughs> they're kind of mid-carters. Yeah. And, and, yeah, then, no, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Say. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you're bringing in all the, you, you bring in a Ricky Starks. Yeah. I, even even Hook seems more credible than they they like you see more of a rise coming out of Hook than you do see the other guys. You, I mean, I don't know how old Jay White is. I still view him as a young guy, but like he, you know, he's now there. You got those guys that are just way surpassing them. Like it's that Adam Cole when he came over. It was you know it, it was different to get Danielson and and to get CM Punk when they came over. But all these guys they just jumped right ahead of them and, and they're never going to pass those guys and it's unfair. It's just unfair. Uh, if they like, like 30. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that great? yeah, it's crazy. He's, he's 30 and, and, and this guy is still still there. Yeah. And when you have something and it didn't help. This was what was meant to be that 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 what, what, and I, I didn't even think about it. Because I was, I was like, oh, this is an inevitability that, 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 that will have to have this man at one of the windows. So, like, like that, that makes sense. sense. And, 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 and that would be the same to me. It made sense. But what led up to the match, it did not. It, 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 it messed me up even when my friend said that. It's because he was like, listen, what has Sammy been doing? I went, oh, shit, yeah. What's Darby been doing? Oh, shit, yeah. Going around with Sting. Yeah, yeah exactly. And what, what's Jungle Boy been doing? Oh, shit, yeah. We, it's like everyone's lost matches leading into the, like, I, I deserve a world title <laughs> show. Like, no. No, none of you do. We like, we yeah, talked about this. Uh, actually, one, he's right. MJF's right. Yeah. We talked <laughs> about this in one of the last episodes <laughs> where it was there were so many pay-per-views, I felt like, and they had bigger plans for MJF that they were like, what can we do? Oh, okay. We can, this is a built-in storyline. We don't have to put any effort here. Let's focus on the Blackpool Combat Club and the Elite, and let's let's focus on that stuff. That the story and too, this yeah. this can just be what it is. People can see it. We can get it over with, and then we can move on and let MJF actually wrestle credible threats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and then when you get Juggle Boy being like, "I'm answering Sonata's open challenge," you're like, "Why?" <laughs> No, Sonata's not wrong. Wait, why? <laughs> I would love one of like these you just times lost the world title match for like multiple people to come out and like answer it, and then be like, "All right, Sonata, you got your pick." There's like three guys that just came on, but yeah, yeah he was the first one yeah, to say I won it, so he got it. All right, cool. <laughs> I need to ask though, who is the person in your mind who is a cre- the next credible threat to MJF? Because I can't think, because he's obviously in the program with Adam Cole now, where they're in a tag team in the blind uh, eliminator tournament, mm-hmm. and then he'll probably get another title shot. 
but I can't. I don't know who's next. We'll eventually get the punk look. That's yeah, yeah. Going to happen, but I don't think that's. I, I, I would assume that's revolution. Yeah, and, and I, I wh- whoever it is will get built up between now and then. I mean, I could see. Um, I wish they would do something with Ricky Starks. I, it, it sucks so bad that they don't. They should have pulled the trigger I wish, one night. I, just even for a week. Now, I, and that, not even. I just wish they would build him the way he should be built. Uh, like I said, Jay White, I think, is a guy that could be the guy for this company. Um, he's probably the only guy I can think of that, like, he hasn't kind of got lost yet. They're doing their tag team thing with him and Juice and all that and the Bullet Club and all that stuff. Uh, maybe. But, yeah, all that stuff's going to build over time. And that's, uh, yeah, the Adam Cole thing. Adam Cole and MJF will probably go on for a couple months, though. So that's, we got that until Punk shows up and then MJF beats him. And then hopefully Yeah, because I'm thinking about, like, <laughs> some incredible baby face, right? Like a big, because it has to be Kenny. a baby face. Like Kenny, yeah. Kenny coming back, yeah, yeah, and trying to be like, I want this. Yeah, no, that'd be good, and I and that's when you would have MJF go over because again, that just builds that repertoire, that that rapport. But th- but that's the goes. thing. Th- then you're at that point. What do you? Maybe maybe Danielson rolls back around because he, he's pr- he's going to have to hold the title at one point. Like we've talked mm-hmm. about this before. You have to put the title mm-hmm. for the history purposes. Danielson and Punk have to hold the title at least once each. Like yeah. it just needs to happen. As much yeah. as he might not want yeah. it. Punk's got it twice now. Yeah. <laughs> at, <laughs> at maybe Sorry. yeah, maybe Danielson works his way back around. That's Yeah. That'd be good cuz and you can still keep him heel technically. You could just be like I'm a, I'm actually a better wrestler and mm-hmm. I'm going to prove it to you again. <laughs> I will do it this time. Has MJF yeah. fought uh Jer- Jericho as the champion yet? Not as the champion, I don't believe. Mm, no, no, they just had that little bit of a feud then. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could try to build Sammy, right? Because there's been the tease that he's gonna be yeah. better than the Jericho appreciation side, which I keep forgetting. Is a thing. Uh, there's only been like five thing. champions in AW ever. It's nuts, right? Yeah. Six, five or six. Mm. MJF, it's... Moxley, Punk, Page, six. Omega, Jericho. Yeah, because it was the original four, and then Punk and MJF were the next. Wild. Well, yeah, <laughs> you could tell that Tony Khan was like, "I got the first four playing after that." Because <laughs> <laughs> those first four were like, "Damn, Sting, we really built up." To this Sting's thing. retirement match, he beats MJF. Dude, don't. I would love that. Get out. I will fucking pop so big. I mean, on, like, honestly, I'm too old. I gotta drop this. Honestly, bro. who it should be, who it should be, and who's gotten probably the biggest reaction. It's not Orange Cassidy, it's Eddie Kingston. Um, that, too, it probably should be. I feel like you need somebody like that that can take it off MJF and then lose it <laughs> to, to to a Jay White, like in the next match, just that we're a, a heel Adam Cole or something like that, just to get that the belt off MJF without him losing um, to any of those guys. Yeah. But, yeah. The Toronto the crowd yeah. loved Eddie Kingston. Everybody loves that. In the next match. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, so, yeah, 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 since we still have five matches left, and there is way too many names here, so I'm just going to call this the 10 man tag match between Blackpool Combat Club, the Elite, Eddie, and Ishii. Um, yeah. <laughs> because I thought this match was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was really hard hitting. I didn't yep. expect much from this match. I don't know why. I was like, oh, this is going to be okay. Like, everyone's going to get their shit in. And it's going to be kind of fun, and they'll keep building the back full comic. Head. But, man, from jump, like, the, it, it helped, Jacob, like, the, the crowd. Like, when yep. Ishii yeah. came out, the, the crowd was already pretty warm. Eddie came out. They popped big. The mm-hmm. Elite came out. You know, oh, the Hung Bucks, I guess, yeah. <laughs> came out. <laughs> and they popped big. Yep. And I was like, ooh, man, I'm in. And then the Blackpool comic that had probably the best entrance of the fucking night. Mm-hmm coming through the crowd with the death rider theme and i'm like fuck i'm into this match let's go <laughs> yeah <laughs> the heat uh Takeshita has man it's so good what it's a fucking great star. and he looks like a star it's incredible how this man's been yeah. built up oh he's God. i think he's the most exciting wrestler at least for me in aw yeah yeah honestly and then he has the perfect mouthpiece and Don yep. Callis, mm-hmm. uh, and even even in this match specifically, I like almost sealed the deal. Like when he gave that forearm to Ichi, and Ichi yep. just went down. I was like, 
Oh my god. <laughs> like, yep. I didn't know Takeshi could do that. Okay. That <laughs> match this match was so hard hitting and yeah. had such a good story. I did not expect the Eddie and Moxley thing. I love that they were calling each other out and like beat the shit out of each other and then him making the save was so great. I was like, this is a fucking layered match. I did not expect I was like I got like as the match kept going, I was like, I get more hype, man. That <laughs> This makes it, it. This felt like twenty minutes. I'm looking at the card <laughs> now too. Like this felt like twenty minutes. Yeah. The, even Holy Umino, uh, who is Red Shoe's son, uh, who I guess so is good. like uh, Mox's like the young underwear. lion or yeah, young yeah, boy. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I he's, love that he looks great too. Yeah. He's really like the hair's longer. He's he, he looks he like a weight, like a heavyweight man. now. Like mm-hmm. he's that's a star uh, in the making too. That's a star mm-hmm. in the making. He's gonna be New Japan's champion in five years from now. Mark yep, my words. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He has a chance to be like the next Okada, mm-hmm. you know. It, it the one the best thing I guess about this match in my mind is AW year after year has this this very very bad habit of keeping groups against each other at everything. And the nice thing about this is they've been able to branch guys off and add guys into it to make it feel fresh, because it, you really and the heart of it this was the elite against. <laughs> the Blackpool Combat Club again for mm-hmm. the, the hundredth time. Yet it's mm-hmm. between all the mix and, and everything like that and Kingston throwing himself in and all that, they found a way to keep it fresh um, and it's still just as exciting as it was the beginning. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, I mean, again, you expected good things out of this match and, and it was a good match. Uh, it, it, it benefited from coming off the, the shit show we seen before it. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe it fell in a good place on the card too because you needed that shit just to come out and fucking everything between Eddie and, and all the you know you just need it you needed this match to pick up what just happened <laughs> I'll tell you I was shocked that Ishii got the pin yeah yeah yeah, yeah I was too. well and, and and from everything from the scrum afterwards and all that it sounds like they were leading towards Danielson Ishii at Dynamite um, because he mentioned in the scrum they were talking about who he wants to wrestle and he said well I was mad at at, um, I always say Yuta Wheeler I will say Wheeler Yuta this time Uh, (laughs) he was mad at him for for Ishii and he said I'd love to get get some payback on Ishii but I'm injured, and I don't think it's going to happen now. And then they they announced Moxley, and I was like, "Ow, oh, this was all led to have Which was Danielson. A good match. Yeah, yeah, but it was yeah, led it was to have match. Danielson Ishii. Like, I think it was purposely just to lead to that match on Dynamite. Oh, that match been really good. <laughs> yeah. God damn, that match would have been good. Yeah. Ishii yeah. 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 I, honestly, I mean, I mean, if you want good clips, though, there's a 2019 G1 Climax match between Ishii and Mox, and it, that one hits hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's brain damage the match. Holy shit, <laughs> Uh, Every time I see Ishii on a card, man, I'm actually, like, excited. Because there's always, like, a a decent... Like, they always pair him up with somebody. Right. It's going to be, like, a fun, hard-hitting match. He's very small as a man, though. Uh, I was kind of shocked at how small he is. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, That pit bull moniker really works. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He's, like, 4'11 and will destroy your life. I think the one one show where I seen Tanahashi, uh, our buddy Jer, got a picture with with him... Um, that was, I think it was one of the, the New Japan, um, not oh, not yeah, ROH, the, it, yeah, one of those shows yeah. at, at ECW Arena. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, but I, I think Jerry's taller than him. Yeah, but it, but Jerry ain't that tall, <laughs> like, to feel like he, but he towered over him. <laughs> uh, honestly, my biggest issue with this match had nothing to do with that night. It had everything to do with Dynamite that came afterwards because AEW's doing what they do always and for some reason now we have a will they won't they with two completely different people in the same storyline why do we need dark order and hangman while we also have eddie and moxley not all wanting to fight each other in the same fucking storyline at the same time i don't get it i don't understand why they can't wait for this dark the dark order shit didn't need to happen right now do it later once eddie and moxley made up i don't understand why they have the same exact storyline happening 
inside the same storyline. I don't, I don't know. It's well, it's that's it's maddening. And then as well, like, <laughs> why not? Why not just build it up to make you watch ROH programming? Right? Yeah, yep. uh, it, you know, because like they have a thing with the righteous and Stu Grayson. Like, why did nah. the righteous come out as well? And yeah, I, for no reason. Be like, be like, well, what, what's Vincent and Dutch doing here? It was like, yeah. oh, you got to find out this Thursday on ROH. Yeah. You know, Honor Club. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna pay ten dollars. Yeah. You know. So I I know it wasn't Forbidden Door, but man, did that it just it bought it. I don't know. They had a no, very they got a bad yeah. habit. You gotta watch BT. To understand uh, what's going on. That they just yeah. got a bad yeah. habit of doing the same. That it's literally, Hangman is won't touch the Dark Order. Eddie won't touch Moxley. Look, like, why are we doing the same thing <laughs> at the same? And time? Renee's involved too. I don't know. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, I'm not <laughs> what you get She's so awesome. But all right, let's uh, let's. I, since I'm sure we're gonna talk way, very very long after this match we had tony storm um the aw women's world champion taking on will nightingale the new japan the njpw strong women's champion yeah um so yeah i I, the only unfortunate thing about this is i'm assuming we just missed out on watching mercedes monet wrestling in this match um yeah i I feel like all (laughs) intents and purposes i mean obviously and that's not even a shot against Willow. I no. really enjoy Willow's work. Yeah. And I'm really happy she's New Japan Strong Champion. But it, it is rough to... She's making the title good. I mean, she's she's defending it. She's doing a good job with it. It's just... It is tough, I think, from everyone being like, all right, we all know you're not supposed to be this. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, we, you know, I know, they know. Like, we all know this is not supposed to happen. Listen, you deserve to be in that main event. You yes. deserve to be there. And, hell, you deserve to hold this title at some point. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to be the first. Yeah. And it, 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 it's a glaring thing that I think a couple more – that's the issue, though, is she's going against the women's – the AEW Women's World Champion. So you knew she wasn't going to win that title which is also a shame because she needs a couple more high like bigger wins like that that win on what was a collision with her and sky blue like mm-hmm. that was great that was a great win keep showing off the belt like keep doing all that stuff she needs to build especially i think she might be going to japan to do at the stardom event um and go against julia mm-hmm. yep um that's gonna be a fucking amazing match mm-hmm. Like already, I could tell. Like that's one of those things. Like, man, how how do I get stardom? Like, maybe do I have to sail the open seas as a pirate? Because <laughs> uh, I I want to watch that match. But I just don't want to pay money. Um, this was this was this was a good match because it's two good competitors. But I don't. We need to have a women's match in the title, and it makes it like during the whole event. Yeah. Like we needed it. It just yep. should have been Mercedes. Yeah, it's <laughs> such a. Shame. It was the only women's match on the card, and and like you said, no no knock on it. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah they got it didn't, it didn't have like, a great build. No, uh, mm-hmm. I won't lie. I went to the washroom and got a beer during this match. It f- then I came I, back and it was over. It fell right in between two of the biggest storylines, you know, yep. coming into it. So yeah, it just, uh, yeah. A B match, though. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, honestly, you would have preferred to have the Sonata (laughs) Jungle Boy match flipped with it than maybe. (laughs) Yeah, because then again, it keeps going like that little bit of rise. No little dip. Yeah. It would have kept rising. You know, that's the night. would have gone and then dip and then the next match, which we were about to fucking. The real real bathroom break of the night. Uh, Kenny Omega (laughs) 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 loses to Will Ospreay. Um,. Uh, Osprey wins the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship uh, oh, with a man. little bit of help of from Don Callis. Uh, I <laughs> was I was exhausted. Mm. I mean, not only because it was late, right? <laughs> it was a day late yep. at night, and it's a Sunday on a work night, you know, before a work day, and it was just I was emotionally drained. Like I think I think I put on Twitter it was like after the match I was like I need a cigarette. Like I I don't smoke and I need a cigarette. Like I need a break. <laughs> like yep. holy shit, man, from jump. Like just just Will's entrance with Elevate mm-hmm. and the whole watching the like the riots going on in Toronto. Like that whole video package. Mm-hmm. Kenny coming out to you know his, uh, his uh, what's it? His Devils. What the hell's the name of this thing? Why can't I think of it? His New Japan theme, uh, coming out to that, 
man, the the pop from the crowd, the yeah, I, this match is is what professional wrestling is. Like Devil this Sky. Is, Devil Sky. There we go. Yeah. So this is this is absolutely wholeheartedly what professional wrestling is. Like mm-hmm. I, I want to show this to people and be like, hey man, I don't know, I don't know if I really understand wrestling. This is wrestling. This mm-hmm. is art. This is like it has everything like you can think of. I feel like the the reviewer, like what's the name? Uh, Bill Hader's character from SNL. Uh, like it has everything. It's got blood. It's got you know screwdrivers. It's got uh, you know making fun of a nationality, like a whole nation's flag. It's mm-hmm. got payback immediately right after. Uh, <laughs> it's got like false finishes. It's got super kicks. It's it's dude, got dangerous spots that maybe we shouldn't do in a match. Oh my, that Tiger Driver 91 is one of the most disgusting things ever. And I saw a different angle, which made me appreciate it more. Someone, I think someone got an angle right up front and Kenny takes it all on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. But the perfect angle of how he put his head and the camera yep just looked disgusting yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> like, and if, and if i if it's the still shot i think you're you're referring to i'm pretty sure somebody showed it a couple seconds earlier and he does actually take more of it on his head yeah. than i think he wanted to and that's oh, why it looks <laughs> yeah yeah now nah, i yeah if i never see that move again i'm mm-hmm. happy I'm happy to have seen it one time in my life, and it was like I don't want to see anyone die though. <laughs> that was yep. so gross. How was? I mean, <laughs> how was the match, Jake? Yeah. Like, I mean, how was how was the crowd? Because like watching it, the crowd was like overwhelming. Like yep. listening to it. Um. So I was five rows. I was on the floor. Uh. Because we, I had four folks. Uh. For a group of four, we had two tickets in the upper bowl and two tickets in the lower bowl. Uh, so we were swapping off kind of between matches. So I got That's to be five rows from the the guardrail on the floor for this match. <laughs> uh, crowd was insane. Um, crowd was insane. And for the little stuff, too. Like, when uh, when Omega dropped Osprey on the, like, turned up um, steps. Uh, Ooh, and he kind of did that and dropped him on the mm. steps. It was everything. It was the little things like that. It was calling um, Don Callis a carny fuck. Like, the chants were off. The chants were great. Uh, the crowd was fantastic. I'm no. sorry, I'm going to say it a thousand yeah. times. <laughs> the crowd they was were, very good. Were. Yeah. Even for the little stuff. And I don't know if you guys saw it on, on camera, but it was like the kids were making fun of Will. Yeah. And that's when Will saw the Canadian flag, pulled it out of the audience, and like basically like did what he did to it insulted a whole nation yeah. and then we were chanting oh canada afterwards I, I, we I sang not. oh canada in the crowd <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite moments as well and, and it did come off on on air because i think i did it like watching it and then mm-hmm. as well like you guys did it as well in the crowd <laughs> and it's a normal move mind you yep. but because he just disgraced the canadian flag and then he did the sharpshooter, and then yep. he puts Kenny in the crossface, and yep. me and everyone in the crowd would go, oh, it didn't, <laughs> I was wasn't like, there? I was like, oh no, I think this is important. I don't. <laughs> was it? Was there? Was there you a you sick fuck chant? I think. Yes. Oh, when he licked the blood. Oh, that was. Well, now I thought. I thought when he put the crossface on too, there was something. Oh, there was no. a chant, and I remember thinking like. <laughs> Like it clearly it, it correlated it to Benoit. Honestly, I, I was. I, I don't remember exactly like, what it was. He's doing this on purpose as like a, yeah, you know, a Benoit thing, or <laughs> is he doing this? Because it was on the anniversary really of, be- of some, uh, some Benoit anniversary as well. Yeah, I, th- I think it was a couple days. Oh, it was. It was with. It was shit. within striking distance of of when it happened. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so some people on Twitter were kind of like, "That was in poor taste," and I'm like, sort of. Yeah, sort of sort of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, because at the same time, it's a move. It's yep. a very yeah. effective submission move. He's a really good submission wrestler as well. Like mm-hmm. it makes sense. It was just like Canadian flag, sharpshooter. This I'm like, oh, okay, now I feel. I, 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 <laughs> I forget. I forget which uh, whether it was Excalibur, uh, Kevin Kelly was like. So he's stopping him from like he he's trying to hold his nose and doing it. Like they were like trying to like oh, yeah. not. <laughs> Not take attention to the fact that he yeah. just put him in the cross. <laughs> that thing happened on the twenty second of June, two thousand seven. So like, pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, really, really. Yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, now it's like really. I mean, which is, it's great heat, 
but at the, I, it was so funny because I've seen the we've seen the crossface for years yep. since that event, mm-hmm. you know, and and, and since his, you know his passing and everything, and I've never been like, oh, you know, like uh, or like it's a submission move. Like I I don't mm-hmm. think, you know, but it's just it was like the perfect combo of will be an absolute piece of shit yes <laughs> you know he'll be in canada and then literally the like series of events leading to that i was like oh this is purposeful mm-hmm. <laughs> i was like ooh, yeah thank god i, I did mean, see and i don't yeah. know if you guys felt this way but like i saw a lot of complaints about people being like they sent don Callis away and then he came back did that yeah. take you out of it it did because yeah. it threw me off because i was like i've never seen that before i'm like what what I, 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 situation? <laughs> I have a weird I, I I have a weird idea with it and, and I probably am wrong. It looked like maybe that the ref wasn't supposed to see him trip him. And when he did, they he kind of just made the call to eject him. Because I, I felt like Chaos didn't react the right way when he first ejected him. And and it looked like he was like do, it looked like when he went to grab his foot he was like walking like he looked like he did it too blatant in front of the ref and I was just watching it like was the ref not supposed to see this but now he was like well I fucking seen you do it. <laughs> like, yeah, like, uh, like the timing of this was not right like, I yeah like, like I right have now. to eject you what am I gonna do just yell at you and walk away I that's the only thing I could kind of like make sense of that. Because that part looked off. Even the camera didn't show, like, Callus really doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, the camera work on it was just, I don't know. There was something a little bit off. So when he came back down, I was like, did they just, like, they were like, look, you're a part of the, <laughs> the finish yeah. here. Like, we need you to come back out. Bro, bro, <laughs> like, I, I don't know That's what to do. I didn't, put, I didn't even put that. Because I saw him get ejected. And I was like, he came back. I was like, what? what happened Bec- now like, because didn't it, didn't, it's like 36 years of my life i was like well i've never seen this before what happened the, like, the match right before it soraya and um and and ruby soho got ejected yep literally the match right, right before yeah. it so that's i think that was another thing too that made me like really did they just have <laughs> did they just have two back to back get the ejections like they don't yeah i have, I have the matchup yeah. right now too and paul, paul turner is the senior referee for all mm-hmm. of aw so he, if anyone's gonna make the referees look good which is a big criticism within all of aw yeah their referees um and like how they just let shit go yeah uh, Rick, bryce Rick Knox. was great in bryce was amazing on that forbidden was awesome. door yeah yeah a little goes a long way. I know a lot of people hate Aubrey. I don't, I don't mind Aubrey at all. I like Aubrey. Um, I like her a lot. It's just like there is like the Rick Knox effect where he just like lets so much shit slide. I'm like, dude, we get it. Like, it just makes more sense if you're Charles Robinson and WCW and Ric Flair's in the ring. Like, we kind of get it. The elite, you, best friends, we know that. But it's like it doesn't come off that way. It just comes off like they're almost incompetent. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't know. But Paul Turner, that makes sense. If he's, if he's, which I'm watching again now, if he's the guy, he's going to be the one to be like, ah, shit, hey, man, I'm not, you know, I, fuck it, you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ideally, it could have been like, if that wasn't supposed to be. But that's the thing, that when you start peeling back the curtain, like, part of me wants to know, like, what the match was, like, ahead of time, like, what the rundown was, <laughs> and, like, all the spots and everything. But then yeah. at the same time, it's like, I'm just so into this match. Like, it's 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 purely magic. Like, I don't want to know anything. It's it's <laughs> I, it's it's the best match of the year. Mm-hmm. Like, without a doubt. Yeah. No. Uh, it's... I didn't... And this this sounds fucked up to the performance. I didn't think they could top Wrestle Kingdom. I thought that was like, oh, wow, it was really good. I thought we were going to get, like, another fucking amazing match. But I didn't mm-hmm. think it would hit even more than their uh, Wrestle Kingdom this year. And I just, it completely astounded at, at both of their abilities to just elevate, no pun intended, the game. <laughs> if, if if Kenny and Okada has pr- has shown me anything, it is that their third match in Wembley is going to just be better. If it's shown, it if, it <laughs> yeah, uh, it just, it will be. I mean, yeah. it, two out of three falls, it's going to be great. Yeah. Um, God, yeah. And then the moment, and, and, uh, the crowd, I've never been in a louder moment in a crowd of any sports event ever, where we went Stormbreaker, false finish, Kamagoye, 
uh, one winged angel from Osprey kicks out at one. I've never seen a louder crowd. Yeah. It was incredible. I had goosebumps. I just got when goosebumps that again just talking yeah. about it. Like, yeah. at, oh at, my god. At one point, it had me believing that Kenny was going to win the first two. And that Osprey was finally going to go over in Wembley. Like when when he kicked out at one, I was like, "Oh, okay. Like this is this is the way they're going with this, which is fine." After like the the screwdriver, I was yep. like, "Yeah, yeah." What the fuck? I was like, I, "That was another thing in the match." I was like, "Well, hap- what happens now? You you're not supposed to win." <laughs> like, my, yeah. Right. I went back to like a little kid <laughs> watching wrestling like for the first time and not knowing all the intricate details that we do as an adult. You know, who loves this right. and being like. What, what, what happens now? I don't know. Like every, we're in the unknown at this point. Like he should lose. Nah. He just got a screwdriver to the face. <laughs> yeah. Like it's amazing. It's so beautiful, man. I, I I've been tempted because I, I have a best friend who like loves anime mm-hmm. and all this stuff and, and like supernatural. And she loves like all this like genre stuff. And I've been like sending her like wrestling stuff little by little. And like, she's also watching One Piece. Like me and her are watching One Piece, mm-hmm. and she's like six hundred episodes. And I'm like one, almost at two hundred. Oh my god! Yeah, uh, she to be fair does not have kids and stuff. She she has said that because I'm like I don't know how you're so ahead. She's like, dude, I have no responsibilities but my dog. I was like, that's fair. Thanks for making me feel better about this. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm like, dude, wrestling is fucking anime as shit, dude. And this match is it really is like it felt like you can animate this. I mean, Kenny's been in anime before, but like you can animate this man and. It, it would have the dramatic fucking like lines in the background like when especially with the, the screwdriver and the, the breaking out the one like i could see like it, it felt like a dragon ball z fight like it felt like it took forever and at the same time it was like hyped the whole fucking time I'm like god damn what a fucking match man fuck i want to watch it again i think i might well, I have to work after this but <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> all right so clearly that was a match of the night i mean i I'd like to go against the green. That's why I said the four way. But yeah, I mean, well, I, I said it was, was going to be a sleeper. Yeah, I, from jump even before the match started, I was like, I think this is going to be like one of those like a sleeper. I, yeah, and yeah. then it, it even exceeded my that second match yeah. or that that four way exceeded my. I, I mean, I think, even more so. I think, I think you would agree that Omega Osprey probably should have main evented it, but I assume they know it's going to main event at Wembley. They wanted to put Danielson Okada, which probably would have been better had not happened what happened um yeah so still crazy. <laughs> yeah to that. so we'll i'll roll I'll, I'll roll to this next match because i'm assuming this is what you meant at the beginning jacob when i'm yeah. assuming this next match this is, match was bad oh it was yeah. it was it was awful i mean it was yeah. it was exactly where it needed to be on the card <laughs> yep. and it yeah. yeah no it was crowd was dead I, for it yeah dude i walked it, de- away. it deserved I to be to, dead like, for I, I was it listening but i was like yeah, I'm good. Um, I have no interest in this match. I love all six performers. Yes, and I was like, I have no yeah. interest in this yeah. match. I need a beer. I need a. I mean, like, I, mean, I was like starting to wrap up my night. I was like, I know this is gonna be done. Let me let the dogs yeah. out one more time. Let me like <laughs> make sure my lunch is ready and shit for Monday. Yeah. Like I started like getting my <laughs> shit ready while this match is going on. Yeah, and, and obviously for anybody who's seen it, they know we're talking about Darby Allen Sting and uh, Naito against uh, Chris Jericho, Suzuki, and Sammy Guevara. Um, yeah, it was sloppy and not in a good way. It was, uh, yeah, no one felt like they were on their game, which I felt like Darby and Sting kind of made up for it this past week. Yeah, but even, I mean, Crazy even with- Sting jumped a little bit not far enough. Um, but, yeah, well, <laughs> but yeah, I, it, it was clear as day that Sting was supposed to get out of the way from Guevara. And it was supposed to lead to all Jericho tension with him, and he did not get out of the way. And then at one point, I was scared for Sting because he looked like he didn't know what part of the match he was at. Yep. And he just, it was very confusing. And he was just standing there trying to hit people that weren't there at one point. Um, it just got really like, ugh, Sting. Like, it, it's. And it's weird because it's 15 minutes and it should have been, I think. Nah, and, I'll give that five minutes maybe to the women. Give it. Yeah, to... Sting had a very um, Undertaker Goldberg moment in this match. Yeah, it just yeah. No. God, can you imagine if they added the five minutes? Like, make this ten minutes and add five minutes to the four way. Yeah. Would it still even be like even better somehow? Like yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ, like, like this did not need to be fifteen. And this is this was actually the moment which was funny enough because I think my 
friends group that we were texting at the time, uh, me and, and my friend Nick, Nick like fell off. Like he was like he he said it for a fact because I'm fucking tired. He's like I definitely want to see Osprey and Kenny. I feel like this should be the main event. And matter of fact, this is going to be my main event because I'm going to bed right after. And then I was texting him like, dude, you made, you made the right choice to go to bed. And he like knowingly was gonna be like, I'm gonna watch Danielson in the morning. He's like, but I'm going to bed now. I was like, this this was the match where I was like, man, their AEW pay per views are too fucking long. Yep. And and then I started thinking, I was like, oh my god, we were supposed to have another main card match in Lawler <laughs> yep. and Cole. What fucking what? Yeah. <laughs> like, and I don't I know what dead. should. Yeah, I don't know, man. They were exhausted. Crowd yeah, was right? dead. Uh, Naito got no reaction, which th- th- that was shocking. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, what do we do? Naito is like arguably bigger than Tanahashi and got no reaction. We just saw the greatest match that you may ever see in real life so the crowd was a little dead um but yeah the the sting moment uh, the table spot just kind of uh, I, I, it wasn't a bad it wasn't bad mm-hmm. it wasn't a great match and i just like sting is 64 years old he has given so much to the world of professional wrestling but i think it's time yeah yeah i think we're wrapping up and he it just, yeah. he's had a Oh, great run in AEW. Jesus yes. Christ. Like, I'm so shocked at half the shit that he's been able to yes. do this, this, this past run. And it makes up for his WWE run. Yeah. Yep. Wholeheartedly. And, and but damn, man, like, it's time. I, yeah, we've been super AEW pro, and I literally have stopped watching WWE again after the Bray Wyatt debacle. But I've seen way too many people say after Dynamite that, oh, well, you know, we had Undertaker going around. Look what Sting can still do. It. I'm like, miss, <laughs> jump off a ladder and miss. I, I I understand he tried. The Undertaker and Goldberg tried in that match. I I have no doubt that they both it tried. Try. It, Sting <laughs> did try, but man, yeah, it's it. It doesn't help that Darby gets thrown around like a rag doll, and then yep. you, Sting just can't. And and now they got him and Jericho, and Jericho slowing down, and it's yeah, it's. Him and Jericho back in WCW would have been fucking amazing. Yep. Do you imagine that? Oh my god, that would have been so. Good. And 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 Jacob, you were there. The announcers sucked for this match too because oh they did they called mm. they called Sting that um oh this is the first time we're seeing the Joker Sting and I'm thinking this is the Pain Maker paint. I don't know why they yeah. never referenced. That paint yeah. being the pain maker paint. It was clearly the, it was not the Joker's thing. That was, it, he, was like he's trying to throw He was off. copying yeah. the pain maker paint and they never mentioned it once. They don't they, they didn't even talk about it. And I was just like, but were they are they out of it now? <laughs> after after yeah, Omega Osprey. As, as the, the Joker I was like, is this our first Joker? I'm like, well, he doesn't have the rest. Yeah. I and also it was like we're uh, bringing that yeah. character back from fucking like, impact? Like Yeah, nobody knows what the fuck that is. No. Like yeah. And it said and, and I think I felt like it was lost a little bit with the scrum with him saying the paymakers come it was like it would have fit had they told us this, but yeah, it just it mm-hmm. yeah. Nah, it was bad all around. Good moment between uh Jericho Guevara and Suzuki, where they kind of did yeah, the, when the, the pose. I love that. I, yeah, I, I, that made me happy. Yeah. Cool that moment. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. It. That was that was that was about it. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what that match got. And the crowd started coming back, but they were slow in the in the last match to come back. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So I think because everyone knew what we were about to get to, yeah. you know, that kind of brings you back up. And that, that was a funny thing too. Was uh, as I was watching it, I was like, I was thinking about you, Jacob. I was like, oh man. I was like, oh thank God, like they're in different times. I was like, wait, hold on, no, they're not. Nope. <laughs> no, it's latest shit over there too. Yeah. I was like, yep. wait, we're on the same. We're on the east coast. Just, I, Oh shit, this on. sucks. <laughs> I watched this the next night with pauses, and I was over it after the Omega Osprey <laughs> match. And I had pa- I had breaks in between, and I still was like, now that match did not help me. In any way, watching, I was like, I, why did I watch this? And then I ended up not as much paying attention to Danielson and Okada as I should have. Um, it just, yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, it threw me off, and I had breaks, so I can't imagine having to. And I skipped the zero hour, and still, yeah, yeah, it was, it was still it was too awesome. too much. <laughs> All right. I mean, so that, again, that explains their problem. But yeah. so we got the main event. Uh, Brian Danielson uh, makes Kazuchika Akata tap out. 
as the best in the world, um, as it has been very well documented. Uh, Danielson with, I think they said it, 10 minutes left in the match, um, broke his arm, forearm, whatever. Um, yeah. And, uh, it looked like he was selling an injury until you realize afterwards, like, oh shit. Now <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I was like, he's really selling this <laughs> yeah, like, afterwards. Like, he's man. in a cast. Like, oh, like, like, the whole time I was, too, I was thinking the same thing. Well, let's, let's start. Let's start with the beginning of the match final countdown yeah coming back i again everyone in my friends group asleep fucking dead tired and i'm just like all cat so <laughs> and i was thinking because there was rumors that like the licensing went up like on friday and i was like dude, dude it's, it has to happen that pk's point. on it yeah he's, he's wasting money he's blowing he's taking jaguar's money and he's like hey you guys don't need this here Fuck your salary cap. <laughs> Throw it over here. Um, man, I, I, from Jump, it was. It, it, that's when. That was so funny, too. Oh, oh he got it. shit. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Holy shit. I'm showing the Okada Bucks that rained yeah. down uh, during the entrance. Yeah, yeah it's oh, so. so it's like QT Marshall gave yeah. us Young Bucks money. Yeah. And I still have the it. First ever Dynamite. Yeah, yeah see. Yeah. We went to the first ever diamond. You're welcome. Nice. You're welcome. The original, yes. the original, the original Apronware podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the original we did, we, we, we did a contest out. and like six people joined and Carlos was one of them. And for the, 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 the DC show, the first show we had four tickets and then my buddy that was supposed to go with me didn't go. So then I took my fiance and, uh, Carlos went with his friend cause he won the contest. Um, mm -hmm. who, whoever did that, who was ever in that contest, don't watch this video. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so Carlos said, uh, bumps into somebody when he's getting beer or whatever. And they're like, Hey, yeah, I was actually walking to you guys. I was yeah. Yeah. He was just come up to say like, thanks. Yeah. Cause our seats were not next to each other, but they were near yeah. each other. Um, and they gave him tickets down by the, Dude, like, we need to fill out camera side. Just yeah. Nice. Like, yeah. Right by the entrance. On the side of the yeah, it was, yeah, they were like, do you mind? They're like, well, it, I was like, well, how much are they? And they're like, free. I was like, can, he's like, yeah. And I was like, can I get four? <laughs> yeah. He's like, four. I'm like, well, like two for me. And like, I'm actually meeting my friends right now. They're like, oh, yeah. I was like, I'll, and yeah. I text you right away. I was like, yo, walk out now. Yeah. <laughs> Come with me. Yeah, that was. <laughs> and yeah, and then we ended up getting Young Bucks money, which was nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. But yeah, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> Both interested. I, this is, and I have to agree with you, at least, at least from watching on, on television. It felt like the crowd was slowly getting back, and I think God. I think, funny enough, I think Final Countdown actually is the thing that got the people back. Yep. Like, right. Oh shit! This is really about to happen. Like, let's mm -hmm. get back into it. It's like and when that, they, that they song played it multiple plays at the times, bar. including <laughs> after the match, because Danielson did a like speech to thank everyone for coming and right. saying it was like his probably his favorite crowd that he's ever been a part of. And I'm sure they say that all the time. <laughs> but then they, they did Final Countdown again, Hell and yeah. the crowd was like friggin loving it <laughs> so like tk's looking at the clock is like i got this for like two more hours okay yeah just play fucking keep going four more just times <laughs> yeah i gotta get my money's worth out of this one guys yeah. come on cost per play needs to be low let's go <laughs> yeah, exactly. man yeah this this match was great man and i i it, this is another one that felt longer than than it was i'm looking mm -hmm. at it right now 27 minutes and 40 seconds it felt longer oh. and jesus man like I it was a great match, and the whole time I was thinking the same thing. Respass was thinking, I was like, "Man, he is selling this arm so perfectly." God, what a student of the game Danielson is! And it was like, yeah, well, it's like it's like it's no. it's like come on, man! Like I know you want to sell it, but it, this is taken away from the match a little bit when you're watching it. You're like, you're like, uh, are are we getting a trilogy here too? Because they, are they like purposely holding back? And yeah, then we find out afterwards that that was not on purpose. The, some of this stuff was done on the fly because it was like, hey, all right, yeah. Hey, what two perfect competitors to be like? Hey, we have to adjust the rest of the match. Yep. Well, the two most naturally gifted fucking professional wrestlers in the universe. Yeah. Okay. Let's make <laughs> let's make magic. Yep. Let's just make something work. And then like, it was so funny because like I, I I was like, oh wow, like I didn't expect that ending. And I think someone on Twitter, or I think it was Ryan Smith, was like, what did you think of that? I was like, ah, it caught me a little off guard, but like, kind of makes sense he was selling We were arm. shocked. Yeah, it, it, was, it felt like a shocking ending. I wasn't expecting that. And like him grabbing like grabbing his leg to pull out the arm, and I was like, oh, man, that looks gross. That looks great. 
And then it's happening. We're like, oh, shit, Okada. I was like, I can't think of a time Okada is tapping. And it turns out it's the second one ever. <laughs> it says New Japan, you know? And I was like, damn, very sudden, very not anticlimactic, but I was like, oh, it kind of makes sense where, where the match was going. I was like, damn, that did pretty good. And then you find that he broke his arm. It was like, oh, yep. shit, that's even more impressive. God. Last damn. time he got submitted was Shinsuke in like 15, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was like something yeah. like that. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's like another eight years before someone taps him out. Yeah. Like, what an honor to be given that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, that, and he, he seems so down to earth. Okada, like he's he doesn't see like of course he is the rainmaker, you know all this stuff. But like he just seems just like a normal chill dude, and he just happens to be the same thing with like Kenny, just chill motherfucker who just happens to be like literally the best wrestler who's ever been alive. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like how are you both? Like I don't understand. I don't understand how you're both. The the one it, it, the one thing I was happy about with it was in the media scrum afterwards, where Danielson clearly talks about how he wants to wrestle him again. Uh, and, you know, and, and whether that was meant to happen again or not, you could tell he was like, "We we could have done better." <laughs> you know, they were like, "Well, who do you want to wrestle now?" You finally wrestle Okada. He's like, "I don't expect me to be able to beat him. Like, the, like I know how he is. I know he'll come back. That won't happen again with him. I want. I feel like I didn't prove it." completely kind of thing and it's like all right yeah give me nice Kingdom, yeah give, give us yeah give it back to us um yeah it, yeah uh wrestle kingdom night two yep yeah it, 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 it was it was a shame it was a shame because i felt like it was a good match it could have been a great match especially after the shit show we watched before it um <laughs> if there was anything that like Basically, it was a, a, a palate cleanser of the excitement. <laughs> We've seen it in the match before this. It's like, all right, I forget what happened before that last match. That shit just men in black tased me. I I don't even remember Kenny Omega Osprey right now. Give me something. <laughs> and it was it was yeah, good. I'm it just feel something again. It was good. <laughs> it just wasn't. Um, it wasn't there. But mm. it was. I mean, it, it's understandable why it wasn't there, and that's what yep. it's, I think that's what sucks the most about it. If it just wasn't there, it was slow to start. Mm-hmm. The it pacing was. was very deliberate. Yeah, and I think there were few spots, uh, kind of like there were in the Osprey match. Not to say that I need like a spot monkey match. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one moment though when Danielson like ha- started convulsing on the on the apron or on the floor, and I was sh- I was like I, I was uh, scared for a second. I'm like, dude. Is he convulsing? Is he having a seizure? Is this real? Uh, but that motherfucker. <laughs> but I also love I love Okada. Because it doesn't matter if Okada's a heel, face, whatever. I love that he went up to the referee like, give me one second. <laughs> and he's like, like, Okada don't give a fuck who you are, what's going on. He's going to beat your ass. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, no, no, I'm here for wins and money. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the core of his character. He's like, but you're going to get wins and money. <laughs> this man's having a seizure. Wins and money. That's all I care about. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Fuck him. Fuck his kids. Fuck his wife. I don't give a fuck about any of y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> like Okada is literally that fuck them kids. It's like me. Yeah. It's Michael Jordan. Like he is, man. I when he picked them up. I was like, I got scared for a split second. Which it was uh, like you. It, it, what, how was the crowd for that spot too? Because like uh, they were like, um, it felt like hushed. Like everyone yeah. got I was like, whoa, hold on, something happens. Yeah. Because we thought it was real. <laughs> That's... I might have been the only person cheering earlier in the match when Okada came out with shorts instead of pants. <laughs> oh, uh, I was so excited. I was like, we got a short yeah. Okada? Yeah, I was like, shorts! He has shorts on! That needs something. <laughs> yeah. The friend, my friend next to me was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, look at his thighs! <laughs> <laughs> that means he, he means business if he wears yeah. shorts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, more deliberate. More like slow pace, a lot of submission stuff. There was a yes moment that Daniel Bryan or uh, Brian Danielson in the scrum said he didn't plan. It just kind of happened, <laughs> and the crowd was there for it. So this is an A match. It's yeah. just tough to go after an A plus generational match. Yeah, exactly. And I love that he he acknowledged that too. That he like for a split second and looked at TK like I don't want to go out there. <laughs> I don't. Want to, I don't want to do it now. Why did you put me last? <laughs> <laughs> it's like damn man, that makes sense man. But like, God. And, and the best thing about Elise Danielson is, is that he, um, 
can at least play storyline wise. He can still play like heel with the you know BCC. He could be like yep. you know he could be like a mouthpiece for them because he's still so talented in that way. But God, what a just. <laughs> I want to I want to rewatch this match specifically again without like without watching everything interview. else before it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I f- I feel like that's I'm probably clouded for that reason when I say it was good, not a great match. And I bet you if I watched it alone, I probably feel differently. Uh, yeah, th- yeah, I feel like the last time I felt this this intently about like oh my god, this match is amazing, but this match was really good. Uh, it's a it's a deep cut. It's like WrestleMania. Something I don't know, but it was um I forget what match was it was the main event, and to me it was like this is a good match, this is a good especially WrestleMania match main event and stuff like that, but the match of the night and probably for a couple months at least that year was Undertaker and Batista for the World Heavyweight Title, like in that WrestleMania I cannot remember which one it was specifically man that match I and there was a twenty three. Yes, that's exactly that. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think Shawn Michaels had a match too that night and stuff. And I'm a huge like Shawn Michaels mark. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Nah, man, Batista and Undertaker. And even them, the, everyone, a lot of people were like, Nah, Batista Undertaker, Batista Undertaker. And then it was like, Whatever was the main event. It was probably it was Cena, Cena Michaels. Michaels. Yeah, I was like sitting there. I was like, Probably Cena Michaels. And that was a good match. <laughs> that's that was a that's really- the hair versus hair Donald Trump WrestleMania. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why could Umaga be alive and someone else not? <laughs> I would gladly take you sh- someone you else. You shouldn't say that about Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> man, but yeah, that, that's, that's, this is like the last time I felt that way. I was like, man, okay, this is A, this is A+. plus. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's hard. I really, I want to take almost like a week, though. Like, I don't want to watch it, like, too soon after like, I want to take some time because I feel like there's so much to learn from that match as well. Like, that, that is as equal, like, the other side of a coin to the Okada Osprey match. It'd be like, this is what you show people. This is what wrestling is. This is art and all this stuff. And then this is like, all right, this is like that pure style that kind of like, this is different. This is like a little more hazy technical stuff. And then get to the whole match. And I would love to see like someone who doesn't watch wrestling or who's like very based on, like, oh, that ending's weird. Like, okay, so let me tell you what happened. He broke his arm. <laughs> And yeah. just don't say shit about it just to show yeah. somebody. Like, yeah, he broke his arm, like, right here. It changed my perception on the match. Afterwards, when we found Me out too. on Twitter, because I, I was like, yeah, that was that was good. And then found out that he had a broken arm for the last 10 minutes, <laughs> and it immediately was like, oh, shit, how did he finish? <laughs> mm-hmm. I, yeah, that... And, and that's probably why I'm still referencing it as a good match. Because it was hard for it to be great <laughs> with a broken arm. Like, it just was hard for it to hold up and i realize you look at it with that after the knowledge afterwards and you're like all right but yeah i i I don't know i still view it i also really enjoyed that four-way match so i think that was the other thing too in my mind it was still the the, it was the third best match of the night at best so it it was funny Mm. funny enough i i at the time felt the same way and it only only have retroactively put it as my second because of the knowledge of, of his broken arm uh, but yeah, for 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 Sunday and most of Monday, I was like, oh yeah, Osprey, Kenny, Four Way, Danielson, Okada, and even that, even saying it at three, I'm like, damn, still a really good match. Like I was still like really hype on it. Like it was like that that those three sold the pay per view to. If I we don't do letter grades and stuff, but I would give it like an A plus. Mm. And it's because because of those three matches, even like even the. It might be an A just because of Sting. <laughs> that match. Yeah. Like, that might take it down a notch. But, like, honestly, those three matches are just so, so, so good that they were, they're worth the ticket price. Yep. Yeah. What would have made it an A+. Plus? It was a little shorter, and the match order was different. Yep. That's it. Yep. A pay-per-view. Yeah. Oh, my God. But can you imagine, though, like, it, it, in a different world that it's... It's Osprey and Kenny as the main event, and Danielson and Okada as like the match before. Like, can you imagine how exhausted all of <laughs> we as fans, like at home, could be like, "Oh, I'm going to bed." You guys have to leave the arena, get yeah. in your cars or the train or whatever. I didn't get home until three thirty because I lived uh, two and a half hours from Toronto, so three thirty I got home. But it was worth it. See, yeah, no, that yeah. that is worth it. Mm-hmm. That is worth it. So, how was how was overall, Jacob? How would you? 
how would you rate the pay per view, and then how would you rate your experience going to the pay per view? Now that yeah. you've seen like once in a generation match. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I kept telling, because a couple of folks that I work with, like, know that I like wrestling and follow me on Twitter or whatever. And they're like, so you went to this wrestling thing. Tell me about it. And I said, very simply, I'm like, it is wild to know that as a 34-year-old man, that I will probably in my life never see a match that good in person again. That, yeah. This could be the greatest match I ever see in person in my life. This could be the greatest pay-per-view I ever go to in my life. Yeah. Um, the crowd just made it that much better. Little things too, like uh, RJ City came out and he's like Canadian as well, and he got a chant. And yeah, like, so that's over. a guy who does so much work and works so hard to get there, and RJ City gets a chant. Like, that's <laughs> the shit that I love. Canadian wrestling crowds rule, <laughs> and I'm in a, I'm in a real pocket. Um, I'm essentially in like the Impact pocket as well because I don't know if you guys, do you guys follow much Impact? Mm. I will catch up on like YouTube is my friend when it comes to that because I, <laughs> yeah. I I'm very picky choosy with that. Like I love the Knockouts division. I think mm-hmm. they've always had probably the best women's division in any American uh, promotion mm-hmm. for the longest time, and still to this day. I mean the, the amount of of wrestlers that they get in in that specific division mm-hmm. and the history behind that title means more to me in women's wrestling than like anything WWE's ever. Maybe mm-hmm. NXT. You know, like uh, their whole run as women's champions from like start to finish, like where they're at now, even like it's okay, but nothing compared to the knockout division. Like they've built, so that's like my shining grace for impact for me is that their women's division is so no pun intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you think of that? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like yeah. in a in a zone where like impact runs Windsor, Ontario, St. Clair College. That's kind of almost there. That's where Slam Anniversary is going to be, which is my hometown, my old hometown, because Scott Demore is from my, my hometown too, oh, yeah, and Toronto. So, like, I get that glut of Impact Wrestling, and then we get pay-per-views like this. I'm in a great place in wrestling <laughs> in North America, and I don't think I'll see anything better ever. So this gets an A, <laughs> and that match gets an A+. plus. Like, it's arguably the best thing I've ever seen live. It's, it's, it's so shocking, and it? That's so funny, too, because we were complaining, me and my friend Nick and, and Mark were complaining about it. Cause we, we, TK, when, when they come to Philly every time, right, comes out before Dynamite or, like, you know, uh, Rampage. I want to say Clinton, mm-hmm. but that's just because it's so new. But before Rampage, and, like, hypes out the crowd and stuff, he's like, I love Philly. And you can see him. There is a certain ECW footage you can see yep. TK in the crowd as a child, mm-hmm. like, at the ECW arena, which is now the 2300 arena. Um... And, and, and Philly has such a special home for professional wrestling, and then not even just ECW, just in general, like the Spectrum and the you know all the the venues that we've had throughout the history of Philadelphia and, and the love that we have for professional wrestling in our city. Like we are as much as a wrestling town. Like I, I put you guys up there as well. Like we're, we're and New York is another one, like mm-hmm. a, a really good one. Um, it's very we keep getting pissed off that like AEW keeps doing pay per views and like. Vegas was egregious this time. Like, yep. I understand because it's, like, yeah. casino-themed and all this stuff, and they, that's where they started and all that stuff. It's egregious at this point. And mm-hmm. the amount of times that they go to Chicago, yeah. I know Chicago loves them. Don't get me wrong. And yeah. they're, they're, they're a really good crowd. They're a hot crowd every time as well. But come on, man. We're yeah. not, mm-hmm. They did fucking Baltimore and yep. Newark before even touching Philly. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. What, does Vince McMahon have fucking some stranglehold over, you know, Comcat's, like... The, the answer's well, probably, yeah. Wells Fargo. Now, yeah, and, and that's what I was going to say. That's, that's, I think... Like, they don't want to run a pay-per-view at, well, the, at and, the Leo Cora yeah, Center. Yeah, that's probably the biggest issue with it is, yeah, Leo Cora Center is not big enough for a pay-per-view. What are they going to do? Go to ECW Arena. Um. But also, the <laughs> dub is putting, like, in their contracts for... Um, tapings you can't have a w for a certain amount of time afterwards yeah right. yeah I, did. So. I, I saw that recently that when that came out it, it, it's it's just frustrating because i want i want the pay-per-view so but i'm so glad you guys had it yeah and i think it, it there has to be some kind of backstage what, crooked politician I, bullshit I think the, the other the other problem too is uh, like chicago's got two nice size stadiums like they don't have to just be at yeah, the United the Center. Is decent, yeah. yeah. So like we don't like you That's said we don't have, have that. The Leo Cora Center is not. It's 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 a college stadium. It's a nice size college stadium, but it's not anything compared to wherever they go everywhere else. So yeah, I, I think that's the biggest issue is 
and, and then I mean, but, Wells Fargo is also you know you got the Flyers, you got the Sixers playing there too. So it's not like uh, everything goes on there. You got Disney on ice, all that stuff goes on there. So now you're trying to yeah, find a I, good time to get there. Uh, yeah, um, I do miss. I do miss back in the day when we had. We had our, our big stadium was the Spectrum, which a lot of events were held there. And then when the center was created, it it did open up some. And then it, there was the little rivalry there with WCW and, 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 and WWF at the time, where who would book you know the center and then like all oh, the other person's got the Spectrum. Yeah. I always had a soft spot for the Spectrum, and I wish we still. I think that's correct. I think I wish we still had something like that because they were right there in, in spinning distance with each other. I've seen concerts at the Spectrum. I have fond memories of that specific place growing up it would be nice to like have the league of course for dynamite collisions rampages and then be like all right revolutions happened at the spectrum and then i don't know open up AEW with like this is all the history that you know this this building holds like rick flair <laughs> you know, defeated whoever here and you know staying wrestled here you know do something like that but yeah we have historic buildings, but we don't have yeah, like, anything it's not... that size. That is unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. And see, that's why they keep running Toronto, right? Because Scotiabank is 14,000. Mm-hmm. Um, the first time they came here, they, re- uh, they ran Coca-Cola Coliseum, which is 6,000, and then sold that out really quickly. Um, and then this week, they were in Hamilton, Ontario, which is about an hour from Toronto, at First Ontario Centre, which is a, a hockey rink, which can do up to 19,000. I, I'm imagining the crowd was not 19,000 for no. um, for Dynamite. Pro- it, it was like six or seven last time I checked the seats, the sales. But like, I just hope they come back to Canada more. <laughs> I think they will. Yeah, yeah so, I think they that, will. Yeah. I think it's gonna. I think they're gonna have like a triangle over like the United States or the North America because I think they're gonna hit Canada. I think they're gonna because of you know Kenny and everyone. Yep. And then they're gonna hit the West Coast because of the buff that PWG crowd, mm-hmm. and then the Northeast because of so many of like the MJFs and things like. Because they always hit Long Island as well, which they, that's a really decent crowd as well. As I say, the the, the better them. crowds are in the Northeast anyway. As far as like, yeah. they they're. Because they hadn't been able to do the West Coast for so long, um, you know, the crowds were going to be good, but uh, the L.A. crowds are L.A. crowds. Uh, unless unless people are traveling to L.A. to go watch it. They're, it's like Vegas. <laughs> yeah. But they have that PWG, you know, like that core base. Yeah. But, you know, like, can they always fill up, like, the, the Cow Palace or anything like that? That's the question for AEW. Right. Interesting, yeah. I... Rest of, what did you think of the whole thing you did? What would you score if we had to? If we did that. Um, I say B plus. I don't know. They said the Sonata match was disappointing. Um, that that six man match I want to forget. Uh, when you have one women's match on the show, it probably shouldn't be Tony Storm against Will Nightingale. And then Danielson got hurt. Plain and simple. I mean, <laughs> he couldn't control it, but he got hurt. So I, I'd, I'd say B plus, which is still, I mean, no, I, I think that's great. It's better than anything I, I WWE's was so put scared. out. <laughs> yeah, again, and I was so scared coming off a of double or nothing. I was like really hoping. I was like, man, I hope these. Like looking at the match cards when it was leading up, I was like, I think we're gonna have something special. And then knowing the crowd, I was like, I think we're gonna have something special, and it did not disappoint. Thank God, uh, from from a viewer standpoint. But man, I, I hope they never go back. <laughs> my god forbid god that crowd just, that brought that that maybe be pay-per-view to like a like a seat <laughs> double or nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah um all right i don't know if, yeah i was gonna say you have anything else um <laughs> jacob do you want to you want to plug anything for the 12 people that are watch this <laughs> yeah, uh, you can find me at Jacob McCord on Twitter. Uh, that's where I talk about video games and wrestling uh, and the intersection of the two. Uh, like we said off the top, I host a couple of shows, The Left Behind Game Club. It's a video game book club podcast. Um, you can find that on all major social, uh, major podcasting platforms. Uh, we are coming back with season five of Cutscenes. It's a video game movie and TV podcast. Uh, we covered season four was uh, The Last of Us. And we're planning to cover uh, summer blockbusters for season five. Uh, so that'll be out in August. And, uh, yeah, video game trivia. Uh, yeah, I'll say it. Coming back to PAX West. So oh, yeah. see you there. <laughs> I saw you teasing it. I was like, oh, what there? It's happening. PAX <laughs> West, baby. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I love watching the, uh, the, the, the recaps from East. It, East Sunday. was wild. Right. I spoke French, and I ran while speaking French. It's a thing. I don't know. I My shit's dumb. Please check me out. Hell yeah. No, definitely check out Jacob. Yeah. Man, especially I've, in the video game spear, man. He, he kills it with his work. Trust me. If, I, if anybody has been listening to us for this long, they, they appreciate dumb. So... <laughs> <laughs> um so <laughs> carlos if do you have anything else no i mean it's just you know I'll, I'll, I'll plug my new show while we're here if you're a final fantasy fan the final fantasy retrospective podcast chaos bringers just started oh yeah where me frank and har from uh point of progress if you're into them if you like them you should check them out <laughs> uh we are running down all the main line we're probably probably gonna do actually all the Final Fantasies. You <laughs> listen to episode zero. Harvey at one point is like, we should do tactics. I'm like, fuck it, I'll try it again. Yeah, let's go. But uh, we should be filming episode two officially, which would be Final Fantasy two, which is probably gonna be a very spicy episode. Uh, when we get to it, at least nose wise. When I was looking at what we all wrote down, I was like, mm, it's gonna be spicy. <laughs> um, but all of us are also playing Final Fantasy sixteen right now and gushing over that in our own in our own <laughs> Discord message. <laughs> Or every year I was like, dude, did you do? Oh my god, did I? <laughs> so, uh, maybe maybe episode sixteen might come before, ep- since I'm numbering them after the entries we're doing. <laughs> maybe episode sixteen might come before episode two. Depends on how quickly we get through this. But yeah, you check us out. You know, my stuff is always here. And fucking check uh-huh. us. Check, subscribe to Aperwork. Yeah, on I was gonna say, get, I have nothing else hundred. going on. Yeah, it, it, probably hundred, probably maybe. six weeks from now when we do episode ninety nine. Yeah. That's that's what I got going hey, man, on. It's so. dad's in, in summertime. <laughs> um, yeah. We got pool parties and shit. So if you haven't watched Forbidden Door, watch any replay you can. It's definitely worth it. Yeah. Uh, it matches. Yeah. So, um, Jacob, thank you for being on. Appreciate it. Um, it was lovely having you. Come back anytime. Carlos needs a replacement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, you're going to take that? I'm always mean to Where's Carlos the when there's there? somebody else here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, see, Red Fast lives outside of Philly now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a long I got time. I got out of Philly. I parking. Yeah. So, <laughs> on that note, we'll, uh, we'll see you when we see it.